RGB breathing lights. You probably know what these are, but we have lights that rotate between all the colors in the color spectrum and fade between them. The breathing style refers to the fact of how it gently fades in between each color and does not have an abrupt transition. It's, it's a very smooth progression throughout the entire color spectrum. We've got here with the night vision turned off, so you can see it in its full colorful glory. Let you take a look at that for a minute or two. It does look quite nice at night. Kind of sucks how the night vision goggles ruin the night aesthetic of the game sometimes, but that's a whole other story. But we've got these on our labs right now, and they make things a little more colorful and are kind of appropriate for the labs given you know, all the multicolors of science we've got there. Alright, so how does it work? This was something I designed a couple weeks ago, a little side quest, and I've since received uh, periodic questions of how exactly it was done, so here's the explanation of how it works. Let's put the night vision goggles back on. Whoops. Night vision goggles back on so we can actually see again. And take a look at the circuits over here. So it's easiest to understand if we just look at the values on the lamps themselves. So we hold one value at 250 while another one reaches 250. When that one hits 250, the previous one drops to zero. And the next one, once that drops to zero, the, you know, the next one, because right now we have red going up, now blue going down, red is going to hold. And then we rotate between them. Now green goes up until it hits 250, holds at 250, and red goes down. And it just rotates in that nice, neat cycle right there. Now I've drawn a very scientific diagram as far as how this works. So let's take a look at that. So this, these are the RGB values. We've got the red, the, uh, the green, and the blue. The blue looks a little similar to the black here, but yeah, you can see the blue here, over there, and there. And this is essentially how it works. We have a timer that goes between 0 and 1500. And that's going to be this little main timer up here. It just ticks. 0 to 1500 and then resets over and over and then all we're doing is we are manipulating the numbers arithmetically in order to get the RGB values we want that's that's basically it there's a number of different ways to do this some more complicated some more simple uh, I went through a number of different iterations before I realized that I could grossly simplify the whole thing by simply only having one timer and then just manipulating the numbers to get the values that I want. And that's essentially what you're looking at here. If we look at this right here, we can see here, if we, if we disconnect these to separate the color components, you can see again more clearly how it works. The green goes up, stays at max, while the blue rises until that hits max, the green drops, and the red. And so it's these three colors that then get combined together in order to give us our actual RGB breathing effect over here. So the way I have this divided up right here is according to which, which column corresponds to which part of this graph right here. There is essentially three parts for every color. There is the rising part, the holding part, and then the falling part. And these rotate with each other. You can see, like, this is where red holds steady. Then red drops once green is full. And then green drops, well, and then once red is empty, blue rises and, you know, just repeats over and over. It progresses steadily at, at tick rate. So we go from 0 to 250 ticks, or 250 in the RGB. Therefore, it takes 250 ticks in order to go through each segment. The straight segments are twice as long because they need to be held while the previous color goes down and the next one goes up. So this right here, from here to here, is 250 ticks. This from here to here is 250. This is 500. I've tried to make this as clear as I possibly could. This is time along the bottom and RGB on the left. And let's take a look at just one of the columns right here. So we have over here, or timer that comes in, and it starts with red. It starts with the flat part of the red. This does correspond to what it is in game right now. The, the, the red starts flat at zero and uh, the red rises from 1250 to 1500. So over here we've got red 
as you can see we have it going from one to, okay one thing real quick you'll notice some of the numbers are a little odd like this is not zero this is five five this is to compensate for uh tick delay every time a signal goes through a combinator it takes the combinator one tick to act on it so if you go through five combinators you're essentially delaying the signal by five ticks and in order to get like perfectly smooth numbers like we have here without it jumping up to like 400 even though that doesn't actually affect the color you know i, I tried to make it smoother when i could and i succeeded at that so it, that that's to that's to compensate for the tick delay so that's why this has to be one and not zero and this has to be five of five you'll see that in some of the others but yeah so we start at you know zero ish we go to 505 and for that we output the red on the input count which is this just sending the 250 value and that just goes straight through so that's the middle column that's the one that goes straight through and you can see that's pretty similar on on every one this goes 502 to 1k and this goes uh 1002 down to, to 1.5k as well so over here on the sides here we have the other column. So this is red hold, this is red fall, this is green rise, green hold, green fall, and so on. Blue rise, blue hold, and blue fall. So let's take a look at what happens on red rise. So this, all this does is arithmetic, arithmet, eh, arithmetically manipulate the numbers to get the RGB values we want. There, there's mainly arithmetic combinators here. We have one decider combinator at the end to act as a filter so we don't send the wrong values in. But the magic is happening in all these arithmetics right here in, in how they manipulate the numbers. So this, again, this is once we get to 500, once we want red to start falling, we output T as long as it goes from 500 to 750. And this will give us, you know, 500 to 750 in the T value. But that's not what we want. We want it to fall from 250 to zero during the time it goes from 500 to 750. So what we do is we subtract 750 from those values and we get negative 250 to zero. Well, now it's going essentially, you know, from 250 to zero, which is what we wanted to do. We wanted to fall, except it's negative. So we simply invert it a negative one. And that gives us our positive numbers. Lastly is a filter combinator to make sure it only outputs that T value during the bracket that we want it to output when it, or specifically when it's within the range that 0 to 250 range when it's not in that 0 to 250 range we don't want it to output that's the filter combinator at the end and at the very end we've got it simply converting that T signal into a red color signal which joins with the lamp and everything else. And that's it. That's it. That's basically how it works. We'll cover an ascending one. I won't do the red ascending because that one's a little more complicated because it's looking at the higher values. It's easier to understand if we look at green ascending here, which follows red descend. So red descend ends at 750 ticks, and that's uh, that's uh, it, and we have green ascend starting at 250 ticks and going to 500. So red descend is ending here. And now we're jumping back and looking at green ascend, which starts at 250 right here. So the ascend column is essentially the same thing. We go from 250 to 500. Okay, well, we want it to ascend from 0 to 250 during that 250 to 500. So this is simply just subtracting 250. That column winds up being a bit simpler. Output the T, filter it to make sure it only outputs that value during the range that we want. And then multiplying it by one and converting it into a green signal and that's it you combine all three of these together and with your powers combined we get captain i mean we get our breathing rgb lights over here so that's it nice little uh simple way in order to get these lights working it's a fair number of combinators and i'm sure that somebody is going to post something in a week or two saying they managed to reduce it you know, combinators. This could definitely probably be reduced a bit. I just never bothered because this was kind of a quick little side project that I did uh, at one point and it wasn't something I put a huge amount of time into. Uh, I put some time into it. <laughs> I tried a few failed methods before I got to this one. But once I kind of had it working, it's something I was like, all right, you know, that's good enough. You know, I've got it pretty much where I want it to. And uh, I'm only really using it in one place on any of my planets right now. 
and that's in, at novice on my main science lab so i was like yeah that's good enough so i'm, I'm sure you know this can be shrunk a bit and someone will do that at some point but i just couldn't be bothered because yeah it's it's not something that's getting duplicated hundreds and hundreds of times like say a gambling circuit or something like that so there you go simple rgb breathing lights the blueprint will be on the spreadsheet as long as well the other blueprints are hopefully this makes your bases a little bit more colorful and before anyone asks no i don't have rgb lights on my pc it's one solid black case i don't have a glass window or anything I'm not one of those people, <laughs> but in game when I can actually see them, yeah, we decided to do it. It kind of came along because we were doing a specific color for every planet. Like Volcanus has uh, orange lights. Well, orange lights down here. I put science colored lights up there, and then Fulgora had purple. Galaba is obviously green, which you can't see right now, and Akilo is blue. And we were like, what colors do we do on Novice? And first it was white colors, and then I was like, you know what? Maybe it should be all the colors, because the labs are here, and, you know, we've got all the colors of the science here. And, yeah, the rest was history. Yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. Thanks for watching. My name is Stupid Fat Hobbit, and I stream at Twitch TV SF Hobbit.